Hello, this is Abbot Time for Clocks. Welcome. And we're already into part two of uh, restoring the old, the old uh, 1934 clock case here. And you saw me, I had the, I had it down by the heater to put a little heat on that label. So when I went underneath with my little trowel, uh, hopefully the glue would be softened enough. I don't know but it came off. We'll deal with the label later. It has a lot of discoloration, foxing. Uh, yeah, not sure about my options there. Anyhow, I don't know how long this video is gonna be, part two. I know some people are probably hoping it's not as long as the other one. I'm trying, Let's, we'll, sit, we'll find out. All right, I'm just gonna, we need to take this apart. All the, because there's so much delamination here and around the edges it's coming up splinter and it's all splintering it's just nasty really and on the back you these boards they put on you see the nails they bent over it's pretty clumsy the way those were nailed in so we'll see what we can do so I'm glad you're here and we're going to get started for better. The, the label is not in original condition. Somebody put some type of waxy substance over the top of it. I don't know what it is. But the back is untouched. And it has all that foxing. I've decided to spray the back with adhesive. Put it on this acid-free paper. Which won't yellow over time and then run it through the laminator. I, I know I'll, I might get some criticism for this, that's fine. Uh, when it comes to labels, I'm not sure what the best way to preserve one that's already loose and falling apart, I don't know. If that was an original label, I would, I would wear cloth gloves so that the oil from my fingers would not harm the paper. But this one is already pretty much past worrying about that. So I have this old spray adhesive. It's done a good job over the years. Alright. Alright. Here it goes. I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but if this if the original label was on there without being monkeyed with over the years, I would have just left it and I try to work around it. But sometimes, you know, people do things and they put the label back on the case after they've worked on it. Well, we'll just do the best with what we have. Laminated pouch, you just pull it open. You put your item in. sealed in first but you can see how it's coming out at the other side I'm just going to uh, cut it out and then I'll affix it with some little brad nails little brass little tiny nails to the back when I'm finished like I said before I'm sure there's a more professional way this could have been done Feel free to leave a comment and I will take it in hand. Okay, that'll be ready to go back on. I'm finished. Label's out of the way. Take off the hanger bolt, which also has dried uh, something on it with rust and the screws that hold it on also rusty so I'm gonna clean that up this board they go into is thin so it's easy to split by over tightening screws oh and it does have some splits there yeah the wood is uh, split there through the hole right through the hole so it, the hole can become bigger so the hanger 
over to the wire wheel to clean it up and the screws. Lock. But to get all the rust off, I also had to take off the black that was on the on the uh, piece. And I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to put this uh, gun blue, cold bluing on to see if it blackens it up because you can do it over and over and something will become darker and darker. That would have been helpful if I got that in the frame. All right, we'll just let that sit, see how it looks later. I'll try it on the screw heads that held, held the uh, bracket on. After a couple of sessions with the bluing, or I should say treatments, I'm pretty pleased with the way that turned out. The back, I just put a little on, not much, because nobody's going to see that. Maybe on the edges. But now that I know this is what the chemical bluing looks like, look how very similar it is to the finish on the hands. If I can get the lighting to show both <laughs> properly. Along with that hanger bracket, I also blued the little two little screw heads that hold it on. Now I can go back and these other screw heads that I cleaned up from rust that held the movement and so forth, I can blue those also. And this little the little the little catch for the door that I had to put the wire wheel on, that'll just uh, be the final touch for that. I didn't I didn't show but the pendulum rod with the little hook, I just I just put some steel wool over that and just went back and forth to clean it up so it's smooth. A lot of times they become very rough and I just think it's better like this. It's kind of sharp here. I might file that just to, just to smooth out that tip, but there it is. The hands have just a little bit of rust right here. So I can hit it with the steel wool or my, the little Dremel tool on low power just to, uh, just to kind of clean that up. Okay, and now what I'm going to do with these, the part that had rust and I touched up with the wire wheel to get it off. I don't know if you can see it very well, but I'll just take that bluing and I'll hit that up and that'll, that should be good for the hands. So all those little parts, all the little parts like that are finished. These two screws I both use the Sharpie on, the permanent marker. This one looks like the more original bluing than the, than the one that looks overtly black. And what I found is after I use the, uh, after I use the Sharpie marker and let it dry on there, I went over it with the uh, little wire wheel and the Dremel like this. It doesn't take much and it subdues that it subdues that right in your face black color and makes it actually look more like something that's blued. I hope that shows up. But to contrast these two to one that I didn't use the wire wheel on, you see? So these two now actually look more like actual bluing. So I'll do that and that will be good for these screws. Alright, there's a lot of elements to look at and fix and attend to on this case. But now it's time to just get to the case. That's the main part. So first of all, this piece here, I think it'll just pop up. All right. Great. You can see water damage back there. I guess, it, well, maybe it's a finishing stain. I'm not sure. It could be a finishing stain. All right. Time to improvise. I'll use that as a fulcrum. 
There we go. See, now, now that that piece is out of there, you can see the bottom of this with the water damage. You can see the end grain here. You can see how it's separating. So I'm going to have to work glue all in there. So that needs to come out. get something in there that's thin to get it started and so I can get my screwdriver in there without marring the wood. I think I can get my screwdriver tip in there. Okay, that is perfect. Okay, I'll show you why. The nail's right here. And I was able to work this up a little bit, which, which pulled the nail up a little bit. And then when I push the wood back down, the nail stays up. So now I can get a grip on that, on that nail head. Okay, and that popped up, and then you push the wood down, and now there's a little space so you can get a hold of it. I can get in there and pry that up. There we go. Okay, got the last nail. All right, for now we're going to set this aside. Well, <laughs> we will come back to that, that's for sure. There's some glue or something here. I wonder if the, I'm thinking that this could have had a this could have had a, a label inside. Not certain. Anyhow, I want to clean up this case and these uh, when the wood's split like that, the nails aren't really holding. I mean, they're barely holding. already feel the nails going. I'm not doing it very hard. Just little taps and that's enough to drive the nails back. Now that that's raised up I can push this down and the nails they stay up where you can grab them. So I'll use my little pry bar and get those little nails. Every single one has a rusted head. Well, we'll clean all that up. <clears throat> wow, this board is really warped. It curved like this. Okay, that one didn't want to pry up, but it'll push out. Wow, you can see how curved that is. Okay, now you can get a close-up of the laminated the these strips that somebody glued in. Wow, that's just with a big slop of glue on it. Let's see, this one's already split right here on the end. You can see that split. I mean, you don't see it inside, but that's just awful. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna come back to that also. In this case. Pretty rough. A lot of splinters on there too. I'm surprised. But I'm going to try to drive these staples down a little bit more because I saw the indents of them on the little door. So we can just drive them in a little bit. Oh. Well, I just, I just broke it. I thought I was smart. I'll just drive those staples in a little more and the glue joint, the old glue joint broke. Or maybe it was a repaired glue joint. See, there and there. So now 
I have to take these staples out, take this piece out, scrape the glue off, re-glue it, and then push the staples back in. And I did find out that these are original staples. Have the edge hanging off so it'll go down and the other parts so they just stay there. Alright, let's do it. Let's do it. These are big staples too. Wow, that one went in at an angle. Wow, it looks like hardly any glue at all on there. There's hardly anything there. It's just super thin. Wow, no wonder it broke apart. Now this other part, if that's the same on this other one, well, it seems like it's still good. I just need to clean up this edge a little bit. I might just take the staple out. Wow, nice and bent. That's the way it's going to go back in, right in the same hole. So that's on the right. This one is on the left. These little plastic cups, I'm about to use one to put glue in and then dip my brush in it. Very, very handy for the shop. Very inexpensive. Got these at the grocery store. A couple dollars. doesn't take very much. I want to keep these flat so we'll keep that on the table. Everything flat at the same height. Also I'm putting these staples back in. they'll go in. Alright, that pulls it in. And let's see if I can get this other one in. That one's at an angle too. Okay. Okay. That kind of helps draw it together, so hopefully when I put pressure on, won't this part won't come out we'll just put that there with a little pressure not much just enough to hold it now with the damp rag wipe off this squeeze out glue squeeze out here if that just dries right there, that'll be fine. While I'm waiting for that to dry over there, this rough, splintery, nasty piece, it's time to start its cure. You can see the ripples here. It, after it got wet, it separated and then it dried like that. Now if I push this down with my finger, that will crack right in the middle and then I'll have more pieces. So what I want to do is I want to reintroduce water so I'm going to get a wet, a wet towel. Alright, since water caused the damage, we're going to use water to help provide the cure. So on this uh, wet towel, I'm going to put it underneath. I should probably use steam like practical fixes mentioned for the other video to use steam to get out a dent but you can also use steam to introduce moisture into the wood I thought there was actually a piece missing here that broke and flaked off but now that it's wet and I push this and push it back in like this there's actually no piece missing that's how far it deviated. 
that's the worst part right there. And then I'll keep these clamps on overnight for it to dry. I might put it down there by the heater for a few hours. And then one more piece. Okay, hopefully that'll be fine. We'll let that dry. <clears throat> and then this board, the back board for the back of the case. See how that's curved? I don't know if I'm going to split it right down the middle if I try to flatten it. You only need to really spray the middle. I know there's some finish on there because the water isn't going well in spots it, it, it's getting soaked in but in other spots it's just puddling on the surface. Okay this clamp sucks. Now it's pretty flat. So I'm just going to let it dry like that. Put it down here by the heater for a few hours and then let it sit definitely overnight. All right, that's about all I can do today. All right, we'll see how uh, this one glued up. All right, that's good and strong. That that will do fine. Wow. This was that wavy piece. I didn't glue it yet. All I did was wet it and then clamped it down so it would dry straight. <laughs> I could have activated the glue underneath it because <laughs> it doesn't want to separate. It, it could have activated old glue under there. All right, well, I'll see if I can get something in there and separate it so I can glue it properly. But Okay, I'm real happy with that because it's wavy stuff. It's flat now. All right. This one was curved in the middle like this, cupped. So even if I took some of that out, it's worth trying. It, I didn't steam it like I should should have done properly, but it is what it is. Okay, well, that's still got a cup in it. <laughs> the cup is still there. But on this end, it actually took it out. It's real flat. Yeah, these are about ready to come off. The glue under there is separating. Maybe because it curved, I don't know. But these are just horrible anyway. And I don't like the idea of this block that the hanger screws into being split because the hanger keeps the clock from falling off the wall and if what's holding it is split I might replace that heat it up with the glue gun try to dislodge that these boards that were added for stability here on these wings here and here they were not only nailed but but they were uh, glued on so I'm gonna leave them, but I'm gonna sand up the edges that are rough. And these two nails here, the heads have bent over because somebody nailed them wrong. I'm just gonna take those out, and then we'll fill the holes. I loosened that little nail, so, okay. 
that's what we want and if I can get under this one okay that should come out let's see here where are we there we go okay the other one there we go yeah maybe that looks a little worse than just the nail head bent over but I'll fill that in and try to mitigate its ugliness to inject the glue in, in these really small areas here I'm going to use this little craft hobby syringe with a little small tip and I'm going to inject this uh, hide glue in there otherwise I don't know if I can get glue even in there with my little spatula only so I'll be back after I get this part glued up here okay I got clamps on that little piece little section that I did got some glue squeeze out that's good tried to wipe it off we'll see how it works hopefully that'll hold that down stabilize it so what I need to do is go all the way around and anything loose put glue on the little holes for the hinges on the door they were they have cracks going all the way through the hole so I'm just going to squirt the glue in there in those cracks just to stabilize it okay while well, most of those parts those little pieces of laminate are being glued I'm gonna go around in all the cracks that I see I'm gonna I'm gonna fill with this FAMO wood most wood patching products that I've used by the time I go to use them again they're dried out and they're no good some you can mix with uh, alcohol or something to give them new life but I, I really don't like most of them so I'm gonna I'm gonna squeeze this on my finger and rub it into all the cracks in this wood before I sand it to help stabilize it and this does also take a stain I just go over a crack and rub it in, sand it later. Okay, it's the new year now. It's January 1st, 2021, and I'm still working on this this clock, but I have made some progress. This this had a serious cup in it. I mean, it was seriously curved. Now, look at that. That looks pretty good. I thought I thought I got it flat before, but I didn't. And I think the reason was that there was still some enough of the old finish on to keep the water from penetrating. So what I did was I lightly sanded it with 220 and then with the cup side facing down right in the middle is where I squirted, I, I squirted some water and then I put this anvil right on top overnight. And now there's a slight curve there but it's not as pronounced as it was so I can live with that. I'm not going to go through the effort of steaming this piece of wood just to flatten it that much. Now I'm just lightly going over with 220 on the case just to uh, clean up some of the roughness. Okay, I think I have all the all the cavities 
holes, imperfections filled with filled with the filler. It sure doesn't look pretty there. What a mess. I think I have all the parts that were splintering glued down. So now I'm going to go over it with my rotating sander. It's not orbital, but it's a rotating palm sander with a 220 to clean this up. And it's kind of loud. I got my vacuum hooked up to it. So I just have to be careful and go around the edges and do that and then do touch up some areas by hand. All right, I finished sanding with 220 to smooth everything over because boy, that was sure rough. So what I'm doing is I'm just going over the whole thing with the dark Old English. And that is just coloring everything and blending it really nice. See, now here's some of the, here's some of the wood filler in the crack. And that Zara wood filler, it says it does take stain. And then you look at then you look at what I just showed you. It just everything seems to blend real nice. Got some roses coming on. Mother has a cold. So I thought she could use some nice roses. There was a block, a little block, to reinforce the hanger. So when the hanger on the back screws in, that it's just not this thin split board that's holding the clock on the wall. They had this piece on here made of El Chipo wood with a crack running right down the middle of it. So I made a new one out of walnut, sanded it, just put little nice uh, sand at the edges to make them smooth and just a little more even though no one's gonna see it no one's gonna see this but uh, it, it just gives it a nice touch so I'm, I'm gonna glue it right there I'm just gonna use my tight bond put it on both surfaces let it set up a little bit because as soon as you put it on here and put the clamp on it it's gonna start moving around so if it tacks up a little bit gets a little thicker then it won't slide so much when I put the clamp on all right, I finished the backboard, for lack of a better term, and I rubbed it out after going over it with the scratch cover, and I did put Howard's feed in wax over the top. It's a little darker than I wanted to do, but uh, it covers up some of the imperfections better. I put a dab of glue just a little one. Maybe stick it in there. Because when the nail goes back in, I want it to bite, to hold. So I just spin the toothpick around, put the glue in there. I know you can't see that, but it's it's not enough to hold the nail against pulling out with a hammer. You can pull it out again, but it'll help the nail stay in there.
I'm not sure if the video recorded putting the door on because I got a storage is full message and then change the battery pack message but before it had remember the play in it I'm wiggling it back and forth and there's no play so that actually turned out pretty good and then I'll just put this little catch on the side I, I screw it in just to where it's tight and then I back it off so it has a little so it falls like freely see so that is a good fit I didn't even have it zoomed in sorry about that see that this part I've actually been dreading which is that dial anyhow under magnification I I've confirmed that this is a paper dial on the other side I could clearly see the two layers the layer of paper and the metal disc so because it's paper I, I can't use anything liquid to clean up this rust so I'm trying a few things I cut off a piece of scotch bright pad and I'm working it like this and it is coming up but I'm just going to work one area at a time like this to get that rust off of there all right I have patience but I don't have that much patience so what I decided to do is use the vacuum the shop vac while I use my Dremel tool so all the dust goes in here I think that's about as good as I'm going to get all that rust off and now I just need to clean it up a little more see that no rust I wasn't in I wasn't actually thrilled with the semi-chrome either so I chased around the whole thing with my 4 aught steel wool pad and I'm still not happy with the result but the rust is gone Sorry, but the rust is gone. See, it's not, <laughs> it's better, but oh well, maybe I'm being too fussy. And the dial, we didn't, we didn't do anything bad to the dial, so I'm happy. If you remember in the very first video, I showed you how the top wasn't even even, the door, it was sagging so much. You could see the top of the door from the front, that's how much it was sagging, but now it's actually right up there. And when you open and close it, really smooth, really smooth. Okay, the little catch on the back when you close the big door. There isn't one. There's just a little hook thing sticking through, but I have to cut it so there's enough room for my little catch that I made to go down and catch it. And then you just flip it up. I'm not sure what the best way to do this is, but... Just bending it back and forth. It's pretty thin. I think it'll snap off. I just need to file this a little smoother. Now when that goes down, see this is 
that's a little tight so I can narrow this down that's fine that'll that'll catch it might have to put a screw in there but I think the little nail is okay I almost forgot to put the label on. The breads that I have here are too long. These are the smallest ones that I have, little brass ones. So what I did was mark where it's going. I'm gonna do that on all four corners. And then I drilled the smallest hole, just slightly smaller than the uh, thickness of the bread. And then I'll cut it, cut it real short, and then put them in there. Well, I appreciate everyone bearing with me through working on the case. It looks a little better than it did, especially with that delamination that was happening inside. Wow. But it's all smooth now. No splinters. That's the main thing. And the doors open and close nice. So, the next part is going to be taking the movement apart, cleaning it, oiling it, putting it back in, hopefully get it running. I don't know what I'll find. I'm still definitely learning this too. But uh, hopefully, hopefully because it's time only, there's not as many gears in here, which is good for me learning. So it's the new year now. And I hope everyone has a happy, healthy, and blessed new year. And that concludes this episode, part two. And... Uh, We'll see you next time. All right, bye for now.